You know the unspoken rule of a no-hitter, right? Nobody says a thing. So as we're finishing each inning, each one of these enabling capabilities don't mess up that inning. I think most people may have been baseball people because we never talked about it. We never said afterwards, we got past that step, uh, hope we don't mess up the next step. And we knew that anywhere along the line, any kind of serious mishap would have jeopardized the whole proof of concept. Patrick Merrigan, I was uh, a commander uh, at the time, uh, stationed at Air Station uh, at ATC Mobile. When I got a call from now Admiral retired Callahan, and he called me up and, and uh, asked me if I was interested in this uh, endeavor, and I said absolutely. I flew for the Marine Corps for seven years. I came in the Coast Guard under the Direct Commission Aviator Program. Got out of the Marine Corps, worked on Wall Street for about a year, and then when I saw that the Coast Guard was advertising for aviators under this program, I um, um, submitted an application. I went to ATC Mobile as a 65 instructor for four years, and then off to uh, Air Station Miami, and that's when I got the call from Admiral Callahan uh, whether I was interested in Hitron. Obviously, we taught ourselves how to fly and develop the procedures. We wrote our own manuals, uh, taught ourselves shipboard landing. We had a Two, two ships, so we went out as a section, a lead aircraft and a support aircraft, and we swapped that role. So I was fortunate enough to be the um, um, section lead or the mission commander for the first interdiction. And that was on our second deployment. Our first deployment, really, we came up empty. So it was one of those, one of those moments where I think all of us that evening have basically taken a deep breath after almost an entire year of training for this thing, to, to have it culminate and say you know it's we did it <laughs> but one of the one of the biggest things that every single one of us knew was just how important this mission was I mean it was straight from Admiral Lloyd many in the US government Department of Justice uh, even some very senior levels of Coast Guard aviation it was not not so much a welcomed initiative uh, part of the interdiction was a continuum of force that started with the least lethal, which was hand and arm signals, and then we went from there to, you mentioned before, the sting grenades, and then we had entanglement devices for the for the uh, the prop. So uh, each time we would continue to employ those, and that would lead up up to dis uh, warning shots and disabling fire. So we practiced that over and over and over and over again. It almost felt like, especially working in that old World War II hangar, it almost felt like the way aviation was like a hundred years ago. You know, it was like, how are we gonna do this? We've never done this before.